put away that real life table because this is electronic table soccer for the Magnavox Odyssey 2 from 1980. A video game version of an indoor table sport based on a real life sport. Which sounds insane, doesn't it? But I love any video game with the word electronic in the title because that's so old school. Back when it was exciting to merely play an electronic game, like real life games, they suck. But look at this. It's electronic. Even though electronic table soccer makes about as much sense as electronic darts or real life American football. Now, did you notice that one of the features they hype about this game is that it has invisible electronic lightning rods for super fast play action. That's brilliant. Not only do I love the Magnavox Odyssey 2 packaging designs, but their marketing department was filled with geniuses. You can't see the rods that the little electronic table soccer football players are supposedly spinning on, so they're invisible lightning rods. And then you gotta move the middle up and down the middle, and the right up and down the right. And there is no clock, so you can just do this all day until your opponent falls asleep. Please don't do that. What time is it now? Three o'clock? Oh, come on! I'm gonna score to myself. Come on! Pass. Now I'm playing this game two-player, which is obviously the best way to play electronic table soccer. But interestingly, you can also play single-player against the Magnavox Odyssey 2, which was not really all that common for super old school games. Passed myself to self. And uh, surprisingly, the computer isn't even that bad. Nothing is better than Magnavox Odyssey 2 manuals and packaging designs. Does that set you up for disappointment though, that it actually does not look like that? No, this was 1978. I think the fact that there were things moving on the TV <laughs> was enough to keep the primitives back in the 70s happy. Or me today, one, one or the other. strategy when scoring. I mean, Here I'm playing the computer and the only real drawback with electronic table soccer, the only downside is how the game plays with the Odyssey 2 controller, which for a late 70s game console is actually pretty good except you're controlling three rows of players. Pushing right controls your right row, holding it center controls the center row, and left is your left. But those little jaggies on the Odyssey 2 joystick make it less than ideal. Although still playable, a lot better than anything on the Atari 5200, for example. Idiots! Score! The yellow team does have solid goaltending, although it should be noted it's cheating because it doesn't have to use one of those serrated joysticks. You know what always makes moving these little guys easier? The ridges in the Magnavox Odyssey 2 controller. It's just good smooth action right there. I'm being sarcastic. Oh! Yeah! No, you don't. Oh! Even with this game's few faults, for fans of super old school games or the Magnavox Odyssey 2, electronic table soccer is worth collecting. Although, admittedly, real table soccer is better. My uh, parents had one of these tables back in the day, and I would tape G.I. Joe figures to it and then spin them as hard as possible, pretending it was like a Cobra torture device. Come on! Just end the game so everyone can go home to their electronic girlfriends and their electronic Range Rovers. Oh. Yes. Electronic Table Soccer shows the future of soccer with invisible lightning rods, no fouls, no offsides, no penalties. Just be careful when playing the Odyssey 2 because it has a keyboard. It could start thermonuclear war at any time. Don't piss it off. Let it win. Oh, that was crap. <laughs> yes! Oh, the score is tied. Is this when the electronic table soccer stadium starts to riot? No! Ooh. You guy getting tired yet? Are you getting tired yet? No, no. You don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm young, remember? Yes! <laughs> Never too young to lose painfully at electronic soccer.
Because real soccer just doesn't cut it. It has to be electronic. And on a table.